A lot of times we can dress up such as this, and we've won the students prior to them even stepping foot in the classroom. It heightens the excitement of what are we doing in chemistry class that would have you dressed up so strange? Are we talking about zebras, or what is it that we're doing? Well, by wearing the referee shirt, uh, I do this each year for a game that we play called Fuel Cell Football. Now, at this point in the year, we would have already talked about balancing chemical equations. We would have talked about how hydrogen and oxygen react to produce H2O, water vapor. Uh, it takes two hydrogen molecules to re that will react with one wa uh, oxygen molecule to produce two water molecules. This would be already very, very easy for the students. What I like about this is that by going to a micro scale type of size, the students are able to enjoy this reaction themselves. The other feature with what you'll see here with fuel cell football is that we eliminate the dangers associated with similar types of experiments which use Tesla coils. Tesla coils cost around $150 uh, each, which for many of us that exceeds our budget uh, for, for a school year. So what I've got over here would be a number of things. We start with one of these, which is a super jumbo size type of pipette bulb. And I need to use scissors to remove the thin stem. Because what we will, where we are going is it will look something like this. Now this one has been dyed orange in color, but you can see, if I hold it up here, the opening on the end, okay, which kind of itself looks like a little football. So what we do, how we do that, we simply take a pair of scissors and cut it just like that. We remove the thin stem to create the little opening. Now, I have a floor in my classroom that is gray, gray tile floor. Very difficult to see these on the floor. So what I've done is I've stained this with the, this is the type of dye. It comes in a variety of colors. This one is the RIT purple dye. And it, the nice thing about this is you can put the pipettes in a beaker of uh, water, add the dye, heat it up, and you'll get colorful type of pipette bulbs. And the main thing is easy to find on the floor at the end of the day. Okay? Well, the reaction of interest would be the hydrogen reacting with the oxygen to produce the water vapor. The launch pad and what I like about this design is that this is adjustable. If you want to go outside with your students or perhaps to the gym, you can raise and shoot things straight up. The activation energy is provided by this barbecue grill igniter that's connected to a speaker wire. And we'll show you in a different video clip exactly how to make this. But it provides, and if you look right here, you may be able to see the spark as it goes from one wire to the other. I'll push the button and see if we can pick that up. Okay. That little spark provides the activation energy needed to get this reaction to occur. This is simple PVC, and again, we'll talk about that in a separate video, but I've got a hole drilled here. I'll push the wire through there. Here I have a brass tube that goes through a one-hole stopper. And so this tube, I simply slide that over the speaker wire and there we have it, the launch pad. The launch pad allows us to vary the angle, 
So for those who may be teaching chemistry and physics, this may be something on projectile motion. And over here, what should you be aiming for? We thought a lot about this. We started thinking maybe it would be a baseball game. Could you hit the back wall of the classroom? Well, after a little bit of practice, my lab assistants and I were able to hit the back of the wall and hit home runs every time. So we needed to heighten the challenge just a little bit. Immediately, we thought we were so great at this game, we were ready for a small hula hoop. While we teach accuracy and precision, it became very apparent to us that we needed a larger target than simply a small hula hoop. It wasn't fun to play for a half an hour and never make a basket. So we finally decided the NFL goalpost. What you see here is one-seventh the actual dimensions of an NFL goalpost. The details. Yes, the orange fun noodle. It would be just a travesty to have a student run into this and hurt himself or herself. So we've added the fun noodle to avoid any likelihood of injury happening in the chemistry classroom. The goal post has been painted yellow. You could paint this in your school colors if you want, but it certainly adds to the excitement. It's worth the extra, in my opinion, to put the little details like this where the students say, first it was the shirt and the pants. Fun noodle, oh my heavens, what? Mr. Bracken, you're crazy. Uh, when there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Now, for the actual experiment, inexpensive chemicals. Inexpensive chemicals for our hydrogen generator, what we're going to do is we're going to take some pieces of mossy zinc, and I have a few in here, three or four works fine, and we're going to put that inside the container, and so that's in the bottom. I am going to add some two molar hydrochloric acid to here, so that we'll produce some hydrogen gas. You'll notice that I'm filling about, oh, three quarters of the way up. I do that so that we minimize the amount of air, residual air space, that's present. We're going to let that start its reaction. There are many ways to generate oxygen. Perhaps the cleanest and cheapest is to use baker's yeast found at grocery stores and so forth. Uh, what I do is I put some of that into a weighing boat. And what you can do is tell the students to count out about 15 grains of the yeast. Not recommended, though, to count because I'll show you how I can count to approximately 15 in very, very short amounts of time. This is 3% hydrogen peroxide also found at the drugstore or the grocery store in the pharmacy area. I'm pouring in the 3% hydrogen peroxide and again about three-fourths of the way full. How to count the yeast in no time at all? A little trick that a chemistry teacher shared with me, the wet finger idea. We never lick our fingers in the chemistry classroom but watch how I can count to 15. Boom, there we are. Don't need to count, just rub it right off. The cap goes on, and we shake that up, and the yeast acts as a catalyst, and we're off and running in that reaction. So here I have my hydrogen and my oxygen generators. At this point, Oh, the fun is about to start. We're going to teach the concept of collecting a gas by water displacement. The students will fill the pipette bulb here at the sink. They fill it all the way up to the top. What's amazing to them is that when you flip it over, the water stays in. Obviously, if you push it, the water will come out. 
but that's a topic for another day. But we fill it all the way up with water. I have here just a blue plastic tray, and as the equation suggests, a 2 to 1 ratio is what I want. I'll, and if we zoom in, hopefully we can see this, the hydrogen, you'll be able to see bubble, 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 bubble. Notice that the hydrogen is displacing the water, and this is water inside the tray. The water is falling out. It's being pushed out. The oxygen generator, let me stir that a little bit more. Come on, oxygen. And what we see, boy, this one's going very slowly. Oxygen is going in. Now, what's nice about this would be the fact that I want to leave a little plug of water on the bottom. That will keep the hydrogen and oxygen gas inside the pipette bulb. And so by leaving a small amount of water in the bottom, okay, the small amount of water in the bottom, the world of physics takes over here. For the pipette to be thrown towards the goalpost, conservation of momentum says throw something the other way. The water provides enough mass that by throwing the mass of the water that way, we'll throw the lightweight pipette bulb that way at a much higher speed. So while I hold this, the opening is at the bottom. That's an important thing because the hydrogen is stuck inside the bulb and it cannot escape along with the oxygen. So over here I go, I check this, I see sparks here, I aim for the goal post, I put this on here, and dinner! That's what we're talking about, right there. That's an excitement you just don't get everywhere. The bulb, we can pick that up. Boy, that sure was a good one, so let's try that again. Normally, the hydrogen and oxygen generators get even better because we've gotten rid of the extra ox or gas, air, at the top of each generator. I'm gonna slide it over the tube again. I see a spark. So here we go, and that goes on, and one, two, and three, firing! There we go, another dinger! Two for two, two for two! You can see for yourself that we have a little bit of water on the wall, no harm done, that's just water. All the hydrochloric acid, all the peroxide stays inside the gas generating vials, and so the students really can have a great time without too much concern because we've confined uh, the hydrochloric acid, very small quantities, in a very small bottle there. Let's try that again. Students will sometimes ask, does it make a difference which gas is added first? We can try that as well. I'll start with oxygen. And we can squeeze this a little bit to push that oxygen out. And over to the hydrogen twice as much needed, and up we go. Small amount of water still in the bottom. I see sparks on the end, and there we go, and firing! There we go. All right, I'll tell you, three for three. This is a great day. 
what I find in my classroom is that if I have one or two of these, students are able to stand in line with their fuel cell ready to go here, and it, you don't lose that gas. And so really, as a teacher, you're able to stand back and watch things happen. Again, no Tesla coil, barbecue grill igniter, speaker wire, and loads of fun. Loads of fun. Hopefully you enjoy your own Super Bowl at your school as much as we have over the years at mine.